Look, I know on the service a lot of people, they're gonna, what do you mean Cole Caulfield first overall? This draft class is barely two years old. It's way too early to be evaluating these young players. And to you, I would say, you're definitely right. But at the same time here, look, if you're a really special player, it's not crazy to think for you to jump on the scene right away and make an impact instantly right away. That's what super special players do, and that's exactly what Caulfield is doing. And look, we've already talked about at length. I've talked a bunch about how at 4'2", 55 pounds, this guy is absolutely lighting up the NHL playoffs here. And he, with the biggest boys, with guys who weigh like 250 pounds, okay, like Braden McNabb, dude, Caulfield is coming in and he's playing amazing. He's even pushing back against guys like Braden McNabb. Now, of course, I know he's not actually 4'2". I think he's 5'7", 165 last I checked for Cole Caulfield. But, dude, the fact that this guy's doing it in the playoffs cannot be understated. Trust me, I've seen so many guys in the regular season light it up. Come playoff time, goodbye. Okay, you won't see them. They got one foot onto the plane to go golfing in Mexico or something. You will not see them in playoff hockey. Not Caulfield. He's playing great. And in 14 playoff games, this NHL playoffs, Cole Caulfield has 8 points. So, a great first playoffs for the kid. Again, against big, nasty hockey clubs like Vegas and Winnipeg. And it got me thinking, should this kid have been taken first overall in the 2019 NHL draft? Because let's be real, we can answer the question right away that if... He was three, four, five inches taller. He would have been a no-brainer lock. People probably would have been throwing around, oh, generational talent. You know that term that the scouts love to use, but only for guys who were like taller than 5'10"? They probably would have used that to describe him if he was taller than he is. But because he's 5'7", the scouts were all scouting and, and evaluating with their tape measures. So uh, they were blinded by the fact that he wasn't 5'10", 5, 5'11", 5, 6 feet. And he slipped to number 15, which, by the way, that's just embarrassing for National Hockey League general managers and scouts all over the NHL. For a talent like this to drop to 15th because of his size, you know it's because of the size. There's no other reason. They, you can't say, oh, there was uh, problems with the skating because he's ultra quick. You can't say, oh, there were worries about how he was going to play the game defensively. You can't say that either because he's great on the defensive side of the puck. It was really because of the number that was coming up in the size category. But if you take a look at the legitimate top three from this draft, New Jersey, number one, we know they took Jack Hughes, Rangers, number two, Capo Caco, and Chicago, number three, Kirby Doc. Three solid players here but look these are all guys who've had their time to develop and play full seasons in the National Hockey League and are still struggling to find consistency offensively because look we know that a guy like Kirby Doc was drafted to play both sides of the puck okay be a Patrice Bergeron type responsible defensively as well as offensively but he's taking his time to develop Capo Caco look he hasn't found his footing offensively too much he's a good player but he hasn't found his footing offensively as much as I'm sure the Raiders would have liked for a second overall pick and Jack Hughes man I don't want to say bust but so far, underwhelming. Not as good as what you thought Jack Hughes was going to be. Coming out of the draft there, people were comparing him to Patrick Kane, saying he was going to be the next Patty Kane. No, that's not what that looks like right now. And to me, that top three alone, man, I slot Cole Caulfield above all three of those guys, Hughes, Kako, and Doc. Then you go further down the line, there's guys like Alex Turcotte, who haven't seen much of him. Cider is supposed to be really good for Detroit. Dylan Cousins as well. The only guy that I could see competing with Caulfield for the rightful first overall pick in this draft is Trevor Zegras, who was taken number nine by Anaheim here. So again, that one also embarrassing by the National Hockey League scouting departments here. And I know mistakes happen. It's so tough to gauge and determine how good a player is going to be when he's 17, 18, right? But look, it's just the name of the game here. And talent like Cole Caulfield has, you have to be able to see it. And I'm sure they saw it. They were just reluctant because there was a seven next to the five in the height category. And I have absolutely no problem saying that Cole Caulfield 110% should have been the first overall pick 
in this NHL draft. And thank goodness he fell to Montreal. But for years and years and years, while this kid is lighting up the NHL and the playoffs, which he will continue to do, trust me on that one, you will see those 14 teams before Montreal, let's name them here, okay? New Jersey, Rangers, Chicago Blackhawks, Colorado, LA, Detroit, Buffalo, Edmonton, Anaheim, Vancouver, Arizona, Minnesota, Florida, and Philadelphia. You guys are going to look like complete idiots for the next 15 years while Cole Caulfield lights you guys up. I promise you there. And look, a lot of those teams are going to get some good or great players for who they picked there. I'm seeing some guys with a lot of upside. But it just goes to show, and I hope this is a lesson to NHL GMs, because the same thing happened in 2011 with Johnny Gaudreau and Mike Calgary Flames. Slipped to the fourth round, 104th overall to the Flames. And if you see a lot of redrafts for the 2011 draft right now, Johnny Gaudreau gets picked top five in those redrafts every single time, okay? A lot of people put him second behind Nikita Kucherov in that redraft. So there's just some things there that, dude, they, they, it's almost like they never learn. I mean, the kids can play. If the kid can play, the kid can play. Don't worry about anything else, and he will reward you for it. Good on Bergevin for making that pick, stepping up at number 15 and saying, this is the best guy available, let's take him. But yeah, that's just my two cents on the matter. I know it got a little heated. It just This is something that really passions me here. And I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think Cole Caulfield is the rightful first overall pick of the 2019 draft? If not, do you think he's top three, top five? He's got to be at least top five. Come on. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. For more videos like this, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.